Hi, and welcome to this episode of John's Model Kit Review. Today, we are taking a look at Tamiya's 148 scale Panzer II. The kit number is 32570. This kit is still available through eBay and other online sources. In this review, I'm going to give a quick history. I'm going to give some details about the kit. Then I will go over my construction and painting sequence and give my conclusions on this kit. Panzer II history. From the kit instructions. In the mid-1930s, the German military pushed the production of tanks. The Panzer I, designed as a training tank, did not have adequate performance, so a light tank was needed to fill the gap until the Panzer III could be introduced. Therefore, the German Ordnance Department issued a request for a new training tank that could be used for combat. In the end, MAN, M-A-N, was chosen in 1934 to produce the Panzer II, a compact tank design with a three-man crew. The 8.9-ton tank featured a 20mm KWK-30 L-55 cannon and a 7.92 millimeter machine gun in the front turret, 15 millimeter armor protection for the turret and hull front, leaf spring suspension, and a 140 horsepower Maybach HL62 TRM engine mated with a ZF SSG46 transmission, which gave it a 40 kilometer per hour top speed. The OSF A was produced from 1937 followed by the OSF B and C, which were difficult to distinguish from each other visually. About 1,100 Panzer II tanks were produced by April 1940, and due to delays with the Panzer III, they were immediately issued as the Panzer Division's main tank for the invasion of Poland in September of 1939. Based on lessons learned on the battlefields of Poland, and in May 1940, France, improvements such as extra armor and turret cupola were added, and the Panzer II went on to serve in the North African and Russian theaters as frontline liaison and reconnaissance vehicles until the end of 1943. Afterwards, they were used to police occupied territories, and the chassis was also adapted for use as the basis for various self-propelled gun designs. It's really hard to imagine that the feared Blitzkrieg type of armored warfare originally had this diminutive tank at its spearhead. Good tactics, good radio communication, and the overwhelming air superiority of the Luftwaffe contributed greatly to its early success in the face of superior French armor. The kit. Tamiya's 148 scale Panzerkampfwagen II is kit number 70 in their Military Miniatures series. The instructions are well printed and easy to follow. The engineering of the Panzer II is superb, resulting in beautiful detail without difficult construction or an excessive parts count. The kit is crisply molded in dark gray plastic and there is almost no flash on the kit parts. Compared with other kits in Tamiya's 148 scale armor line, this one is delicate. There are many petite parts that are easily lost or broken. One commander figure is included, and the molding of the figure is very good. The decals are thin, in register, and provide markings for three Panzer IIs, all wearing Panzer Gray and serving during the Battle of France. There are metal chassis weights and nice link and length tracks with the longer portions preformed, minimizing assembly time. Construction. I started by carefully reviewing the kit instructions. Using them as a loose reference, I built the kit in three major sub-assemblies. The chassis, the upper hull, and the turret. I also left the tracks off until after painting for easier weathering. The excellent fit of the parts, minimal cleanup, and excellent engineering really made for a rewarding and painless build. However, many small parts required extra care during cleanup and assembly. I broke several of the track lengths while cutting them from the sprue and had to repair them prior to assembly. After about five hours of building, I had the three main components, chassis, upper hull, and turret, ready for paint. Colors and markings. 
All of the kit markings were for Panzer Gray tanks. I went with the first of the kit markings, option A, a Panzer II with the 6th Panzer Division in France in 1940. First, everything was airbrushed, polyscale acrylic, RLM 66, thinned with future. Thinning with future helped the paints to spray better and the satin finish was better suited to washes and filters. The tracks were brush painted dark gray next. Then they were dry brushed with testers oil-based silver prior to weathering. Next came weathering. I started the weathering process by applying a thin black soapy water filter slash wash. I went section by section using a q-tip to remove some of the wash and to streak it unevenly. I then dry brushed some thin RLM 66 to accent detail and further vary tone. Once the tracks were installed, the tracks and chassis were dry brushed with several layers of differing shades of brown and tan paint to approximate dusty, muddy European conditions in which these tanks operated. Good pictures of actual Panzer IIs proved invaluable during the weathering process. The upper hull was glued to the chassis and the turret was then added prior to decaling. I brush painted several coats of future in the areas where the decals were to be applied. After letting the future dry overnight, I applied the kit decals. They were very thin and went into position nicely. Once the decals were in place, they settled down with no silvering and responded well to an application of Microsol. I then airbrushed polyscale flat clear mixed with a few drops of hazel tan over the entire tank. I used pastels to further dirty the Panzer II. And finally, I added a thickened brown paint scraped from the lids of my paint containers with a toothpick to depict mud on the tracks and fenders. I added stretch sprue antenna and final detailing was then completed. I added the commander figure at this time. Conclusions. From start to finish, to me as Panzer II took me less than 15 hours over the course of a week. Construction of the Panzer II was enjoyable and relaxing with no insurmountable trouble spots. To me, it was smart engineering, terrific fit, beautiful moldings, and nice decals resulted in a great looking finished product. Weathering a monotone paint scheme was a fun challenge. I really enjoyed Tamiya's 148 scale Panzer II. The finished tank is small, and due to the delicate nature of this kit, I would recommend it to modelers with some experience. Highly recommended. I'd love to know if any of you out there have built this kit. Please feel free to comment in the comment section below. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. And until next time, model on.